Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Machete. This figure was released by NECA. It doesn't actually have a date on the package, but I would imagine it's from 2010, the same date as the movie. The figure comes in the usual NECA clamshell packaging, and we can see him there, and he also has two accessories. We've got this bloody Machete, and another bloody Machete. On the back of the pack we can see a nice picture of the toy there, Robert Rodriguez Machete. Yesterday he was a decent man living a decent life. Now he is a brutal savage who must slaughter to stay alive. And as far as I know this is the only figure from the Machete movie which is a bit of a shame. I know they did some Planet Terror ones. So Machete started life as a spoof trailer on the Grindhouse movie Double Bill just before we got to see Planet Terror. And the trailer was so good that Robert Rodriguez made the film as a proper movie. And also good news is Machete Kills is out this year. So Machete comes with two Machete accessories and you can see these are very very nicely sculpted. They are a little bit small but there's loads of great blood effect on there. And it does carry over to both sides. You can see some great detailing on the handles there as well. And here we have Machete himself. Now this is a couple of years old this Necker figure and it does lack in articulation quite somewhat. So we'll start with the head sculpt and that is actually very very nice. Danny Trejo must be a sculptor's dream. He does however have windswept hair, which does move, it's only soft rubbery plastic, there's a couple of strands around this side, which I would imagine would snap off, but the head is on a ball joint, so you can get some decent movement out of that. He also has this tiny little necklace piece underneath, which I imagine you could remove if you took the head off. The vest that he's wearing also has some excellent looking detail, you can see all the knives on there. Now the arms, they swivel and they move up and down which isn't too bad, there's nothing at the elbows and his wrists do actually have a ball joint on there but this one's very loose, it just falls off constantly the other one's not too bad though and you can see his gloves there but taking a look around the vest, it's pretty plain on the back you can see some studs and things on the side and there's his signature set of knives as for his waist, he does have a ball jointed torso under that jacket it doesn't move very far, more forward than backwards and you can see from his stance, that's as straight up as he stands, but he goes down quite far like that. But you can get a little bit of motion out of that. And for the legs, they're one solid piece, they don't move at all. They are nicely sculpted, and there's a little bit of dust in detail on there. And his feet, surprisingly, are actually on a ball joint of sorts. They do rock a bit back and forward, and you can turn them. But with him not having actual movable legs, that does seem a little bit strange. So as far as posing this figure is concerned, it's all in the top half really. The knives go in his hands quite nicely. They are a little bit loose, but at least you're not stretching any plastic when you put them in there. But because of the way he's stooped, he's sort of restricted to this sort of action pose. And the arms, there's not a great deal you can do with them. His posability on this figure is a little bit limited mainly to the top half of the figure. The sculpt is excellent though, the paint work is flawless. But for me the main selling point was it's Machete and I wanted a Machete figure. So there you go guys, this has been Luke with Machete. Thanks for watching.